الحمد لله وحده الصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأخذة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم We are discussing the hadith regarding the importance of the neighbors and today we are going to start with with the chapter 58 and hadith number 107 باب يهدي إلى أقربهم بابا chapter 58 pertaining to give to the neighbor who, whose door is the nearest to you حديث نمبر 107 عن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت قلت يا رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم إن لي جارين فإلى أيهما أهدي قال إلى أقربهما من كبابا There is another hadith with another isnad having the same content hadith number 108 عن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت قلت يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن لي جارين فإلى أيهما أهدي قال إلى أقربهما من كبابا So these are the two hadith with two different hadith one but with two different isnad with two different chains of narrators and uh, the content is almost same عائشة رضي الله عنها said I said O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam I have two neighbors to which of them should I give my gifts he said to the one whose door is nearer to you so this hadith is regarding that we when we are supposed to give the gifts we must also prefer our neighbors to give the gifts to them and uh, jar in arabic as we have discussed before jar means neighbor jaran means two neighbors here is jarain because it is mansub is a grammatical rule applied over here so simply jarain means two neighbors and uh, here we have to see the pref- giving the preference so prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam said that ila aqrabihima min kibaban so you must give the gifts first to the one whose door is nearer to you the one who is living nearer to us has a preference and he he must be given the preference over others Uh, one thing is here as we are supposed to deal with our relatives the nearest is given preference so two among the neighbors the one whose door is closest is preferred in showing kind treatment we are supposed to show our kind treatment and we are supposed to even share our gifts with our relatives as there is a rule for the relatives that al aqrab fal aqrab means those who are closer to us than those who are after after them so we are supposed to give preference on the basis of the nearness of our relatives same applies to the neighbors that those who are closer to us whose gates are close to us they they are they, they are more preferred over those whose gates are far off and in giving gentle treatment relatives are preferred according to the nearness of relationship and neighbors according to closeness of the gates of their homes gifts are sent according to their according to this standard that we should not be pick and choose we give to we we leave the first we leave the one who is close to us and we give it to the one who is far off so this way we are we are cutting the ties of relationship with our neighbors so we are supposed to develop a conducive atmosphere where all the neighbors live in quiet harmony and affinity with each other we must spread the love beginning from our home to the nearby neighbors so every neighbor deserve 
the kind treatment of ours. And we, inshallah, when we develop this behavior, that we don't make the difference. We are just giving our kind treatment as, uh, as per the instructions given to us by the Prophet wasallam. that those who are close to us, whose gates are close to us, this way we are supposed to build a conducive atmosphere, a be better society to live in. And now the question is, uh, how far the neighborhood is being considered in the Sharia? Now the chapter 59 gives the answer. Chapter 59, Bab Al-Adna Fal Adna Min Al Jiran. Chapter 59, the nearest and then the next nearest of neighbors. Hadith number 109. Anil Hassan, Radiallahu Anhu, Annahu Suila Anil Jar. فقال أربعين دارا أمامه وأربعين خلفه وأربعين عن يمينه وأربعين عن يساره الحسن البصري رحمه الله was asked about the neighbor and he said he said the neighbor includes the forty houses in front of a person the forty houses behind him the forty houses on his right and the forty houses on his left so this is the this is the concentration of the neighborhood that these are the neighbors who deserve our kind treatment when we are supposed to express our kind treatment though our kind treatment should be should be for all but they deserve uh, we can say they, they deserve it legally so all of all, all, all of the people as prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam man lam yarham nas La yarham, uh, those who are not kind towards the people Allah is not kind towards them so we have to be kind to all all the humanity to all the people whether they are close or they are far this hardly matters however uh, as far as the moral justification is concerned or the legal aspect is concerned so 40 neighbors in front 40 behind 40 right and 40 left this is the concept of neighborhood in Islam but unfortunate part is that now the, we don't know even who is our next door neighbor. Not to talk about the 40 left and 40 right, 40 behind, in front and 40 behind. So, but we need to revive this tradition as much as we can. It's not that yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will charge us according to our capability. So if However, we should try our best to develop good relationship with our neighborhood. And in this way, a person's akhlaq are known to the people. His morals, his ethics are known to the people. If you are kind enough, you see the conduct of the Prophet ﷺ was so gentle and kind that everybody loved him and liked him. And even if we see that during the dispute over the uh, black stone, when there was the construction in the Kaaba and they, they were supposed to place the black, black stone back to disposition. So, so there was a dispute over this and ultimately all of them agreed upon the Prophet Muhammad wasallam because of his kind conduct, because of his gentle treatment. So this should be our hallmark. A man, a believer is known by the akhlaq he is having. And uh, akhlaq is very important. And it it maintains the ties of kinship, it breaks the ties of kinship. If we have the good akhlaq, good ethics, then it builds the relationship most strong. And if we don't have the good akhlaq, then it, it sets it apart, tears it apart. So when a person intends to spend something or present gifts to neighbors, then he must follow a sequence. He must not skip the nearer one and prefer the distant neighbor. The nearer the neighbor, the more he is preferred. Then there is another Bab, another chapter, in chapter 60. But before chapter, uh, there is another hadith in the, in the chapter 59, that is hadith number 110. It is an Al-Qama bin Bajala bin Zaid. قال سميت أبا هريرة رضي الله عنه قال ولا يبدأ بجاره الأقصى قبل الأدنى ولكن يبدأ بالأدنى قبل الأقصى أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه said 
one should not begin with his more distant neighbors before the nearer ones rather one should begin with his nearer one neighbors before the more distant ones so this is what uh, the sequence of the hadith is that we should give preference according to the sequence of the neighbors neighbors Se- sequence of the neighbors must be observed all the time in the chapter 60 bab man aghlaq al bab ala al jar chapter 60 concerning on the one who closes his door to his neighbor hadith number 111 an ibn umar radiyallahu anhu qaal laqad alayna laqad ata alayna zaman aw qaal hayn wa ma ahad ahaq bi dinarihi wa dirhamihi min akhihi al muslim thumma al an الدينار والدرهم أحب إلى أحدنا من أخيه المسلم سمعت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول كم من جار متعلق بجاره يوم القيامة يقول يا رب هذا أغلق بابه دوني فمنع معروفه ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما said there was a time when no one had a better right to a Muslim to a Muslim's money than his brother Muslim. Nowadays, people love their dirhams and dinars more than their brother Muslim. I heard Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, many a man will be held to account on the day of judgment by his neighbor calling, Lord, this man closed his door to me and denied me human kindness. So this hadith is regarding the complaint of a believer on the day of judgment. And this hadith, uh, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu, now gives us a description of, of his own time, that how the society was developed on the, on the values, how the society was develop, developed on the teachings of the Qur'an and the Sunnah, whereby they always preferred the believers upon the material things. They preferred their Muslim brothers upon everything else, and dinar and dirham, all the currency, all the material things it doesn't have any value before them and actually prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had trained them he had he had trained and tamed them how to be the men of akhirah not to be the men of this dunya as sayyidina uh, ali radhiyallahu anhu he used to say kunu min abna al akhirah wa la takunu min wa la takunu min abna al dunya be the men of akhirah don't be the men of dunya Men of dunya refers to those people who give preference to dunya in all aspects of their life. Deen, Iman, Amal, they, they, they hardly carry any importance with them. And Sahaba Ridwanullah Ta'ala Alayhim Ajma'in, their whole life is based on the values. So there is a contrast between the value-based life and the value-less life. Or the value based on the Quran and the Sunnah, or value based on the material possessions or there's a, there's a contrast between uh, Islam oriented life and dunya oriented life so he says that we were we were in the time when we were having the Islam oriented life Islam was everything to us Islam was the means of relationship Islam was a tool to judge the character of a person now it has changed now you see Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar Adilanu, he is talking this he was he was among, among the elder sahaba ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi majma'in so he is now telling us that there was a shift of loyalty the believers had their loyalty with the islam with the ahkam that's why they gave preference to the muslims always but the, now after that there was a shift of loyalty means people became much more loyal to their wealth than to the muslims and uh, uh, he is giving the description they, re- they readily spent money on themselves their own people, strangers and neighbors because wealth was considered to be as a tool to gain more and more stations in the akhirah to get closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wealth was considered to be an instrument by which they could get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why they, they were readily motivated to spend the money upon everybody upon themselves 
upon, upon their own people, upon the strangers, upon the neighbors, whoever needed it. Because their sole concern was, their sole objective was to get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And their Muslim brother was more dear, more dear to them than their wealth. Wealth hadn't any importance in the sight of the Sahaba Ridwan Allah ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. There is one of the narration in which it is mentioned that Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, the stacks and heaps of gold and silver were before, in front of him and he would say, Ya Safra, Ya Baida, Ghurri Ghairi. With the gold and the silver, you go and deceive someone else. You cannot, you cannot implicate me. You cannot deceive me. Means your position, we know your position. You are just a tool to be spent upon those who are needy so that we get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Dahar, يُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا They feed. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ they feed the food to the people. Whom? Ala hubbihi. Hubbihi. Hub refers to the love. He is dhamir. Dhamir means pronoun. However, there is difference of opinion among the scholars, among the commentators of the Quran, that where this, this he refers to, whether it refers to the person or it refers to the wealth. It refers to Allah or it refers to the wealth. So this way, we can translate this. They feed the people Big, due to the love of Allah, if we refer the he, that is, he not H E in English, it is Arabic he, the dhamir. So, one meaning is the, the one opinion is that he refers to Allah subhanahu wa taala. So, due to the love of Allah subhanahu wa taala, they spend their wealth and they feed miskin, the destitute, yatim, the orphan. Asira, the prisoner, the captives. However, another group of scholars, they say he refers to the wealth itself. Because a person is, develop, is having a wealth, is having a love towards the wealth. Wealth is dearer to a person. And there is no doubt about it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as a means of test, he has put the attractions in these worldly possessions. So uh, every, uh, I don't think there is any human being that he says that I hate the wealth. So every, every, every one of us love the wealth. We have the, we have the attachment towards the wealth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, despite its love, in spite of having the attraction and attachment to the wealth, they still spend it. They still spend it upon miskin, yatim and asir. Miskin, the poor, yatim, the orphan, asir, the captive or the prisoner. They, they spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Upon those, even though, upon those people whom they don't know. Because they knew the position of the wealth in their lives. They knew that wealth, we came to this dunya, we had nothing. And when we leave this dunya, we cannot take it along. So it is this transit period that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made me the owner of this wealth. So that I can make, I can make my akhira more and more, much, much better. I can make my akhira I can make my position in the Akhirah more and more higher. My much higher position uh, I am supposed to get because of the wealth. So this was the, this was the structure of the Sahaba. This was the structure of the society during the period of the Sahaba. The soul, their objective was defined. Their target was defined. Their objective was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their target was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why so they give preference to the relationship. They give preference to the believers because Iman was everything to them. Unfortunate part is that now Sayyidina Umar Abdullah, Abdullah bin Umar Anhu is now he's mentioning the shift of loyalty. And ثُمَّ الْآن الدِّينَارُ وَالدِّرْهَمُ أَحَبُّ إِلَىٰ أَحْدِنَا مِنْ أَخِيهِ الْمُسْلِمِ Nowadays people love their dirhams and dinars more than their brother, more than their Muslim brothers. So this is he's mentioning about the shift of uh, shift of the loyalty. However, those who still follow the same scheme definitely will will be gathered with the Sahaba Ridwanullah Taala Al Majmeen. Those who follow their footsteps, that's realizing that this wealth is a tool, is a means of getting the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And soon, 
this wealth will be taken away from me. It will be distributed among my inheritors, among my legatees. And at that time, I will not be able to... Uh, they, uh, I'm go going to face a time when I will not be able to spend just one single penny. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells about those who do, who do not spend their wealth in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they think they are meant for the wealth. One thing, one concept is wealth is meant for us. Second concept, we are meant for the wealth. These are, this is contrast. These are two different ideas. And most of the people now, we observe that they, are, they think that they are meant for the wealth. That's why all the day, during the day, during the night, without just considering the line of demarcation between haram and haram, what is lawful, what is unlawful, what is forbidden, what is prohibited, what is allowed, what is disallowed, they don't see these, these lines of de demarcations. Their objective is to get more and more wealth, to possess more and more, to have more and more worldly possessions and material possessions. On the other hand, so the, their life is meant for the wealth. On the other hand, they are the people, people of higher values, those whose objective is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They think that the wealth is meant for them. It is meant to serve the humanity. It is meant to serve the Muslim Muslims. That's why Prophet Sallallahu said, whatever you feed your Muslim brother is a sadaqa for you. And this is a contrast. But unfortunately, we are growing more and more materialists. We are growing more and more uh, the people who are meant for the dunya. And not that dunya is meant for them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything He created for us. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created everything for you. And there's a hadith Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إِنَّمَا الدُّنْيَا خُلِقَتْ لَكُمْ Indeed, this dunya, this world has been created for you. وَأَنْتُمْ خُلِقْتُمْ لِلْآخِرَةِ And you have been created for the akhirah. Your, your existence is for the akhirah. Your purpose is to achieve the akhirah. So, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar anhu mentions over here. And there are the they are the blessed souls, noble souls who follow the same scheme. And those who abandon this path and they don't observe the rights of their neighbors, then on the day of the resurrection, many neighbors will get hold of their neighbors and bring them before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that their neighbors, though they were pious, they were good, and they were having all sorts of material possessions, but they had shut their doors on them and refuse to help them or even see them eager because of arrogance or because of the getting more absorbed into the dunya therefore we must look after our neighbors lest they seize us on the day of resurrection and complain to Allah against us and then there is another hadith, another chapter Bab باب لا يشبع دون جاره Chapter 61 Concerning A Muslim should not Sate himself Or satiate himself Without first seeing to the needs of his neighbor Hadith number 112 12 علم لأباسن رضي الله عنهما قال سمعت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ليس المؤمن الذي يشبع, يشبع وجاره جايع عبد الله ابن عباس رضي الله عنه said here again you can see there is uh, the hadith is narrated by عبد الله ابن المصاور He says, uh, Abdullah ibn Musawir said, I heard Ibn Abbas telling Ibn Zubair radiallahu anhu that I heard the Prophet say that a man who filled his belly while his neighbor is hungry is not a good believer. The good is in bracket, you can see it. 
So, Laisal Mu'minu Ladi Yishba'u Wajaruhu Jaya. He is not a believer who is satiated, whose stomach is full while his neighbor is hungry. In this hadith, Laisal Mu'min is a negation of the Iman. Laisal Mu'min. He is not a believer. Actually, when this type of negation is mentioned in the hadith, we see that it is for Shartul Kamal. There are two, two forms of the Iman. One is known as Shartul Kamal, other than Shartul Seha. Shartul Kamal means he, Prophet is not denying his actual Iman. Prophet is denying the perfection in the Iman. On the other hand, this is known as Shartul Kamal. On the other hand, Shartul Seha means when the the very concept itself is denied. Means the Iman is itself denied. Laisal Mu'min. Laisal Mu'min. Our Prophet says, La yu'min ahadukum hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsi. No one of you is a believer. La yu'min. No one of you is a believer. Until he wishes for his brother what he wishes for himself. So here Prophet is negating. But he is not negating the actual Iman. It is not Shartuk. It is, it is Kamal. Prophet is negating the perfection. That a perfect believer is the one who wishes for others what he wishes for himself. So this is the perfection of Iman. But if a person doesn't wish for others, what he wishes for himself, still he is a believer. His Iman is still valid, but is not perfect one. So these type of ahadiths are discussing about the Kamal of Iman, the perfection of the Iman. So Prophet is saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that a man who filled his belly <coughs> while his neighbor is hungry is not a good believer. It's a good translation in this way because it is not uh, the hadith is not denying the validity of the iman, rather it is denying the perfection of the iman. So a, a man's iman is perfected only when he takes takes care of his neighbors, and when he takes care of his neighbors, then and only then his iman is perfected. Otherwise, uh, even if he is doing good deeds, he cannot achieve the jannah. But if he if he knows that his neighbors are hungry, if he knows that his neighbors are needy, if he knows that they are suffering through, through the hard times, so it is his responsibility to, to take care of their neighbors. And so we can say that Messenger of Allah وسلم, has made it very clear in this hadith that a person cannot achieve the perfection of the Iman if he does not care for the hunger and the thirst and other needs of his neighbors. He cannot be expected to satiate himself while his neighbor is hungry. Such a man's faith and belief are faulty, full of fault. A perfect believer is one who goes hungry himself but feeds others. He is like what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hashr, وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا and this verse was revealed concerning the uh, higher values of the Sahaba and the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. They were praised as people who, though hungry and poor on their part, preferred other people over themselves. They were on their part hungry. They did not fill up their belly. But still, when it came to, do, to, to, to feed others, they preferred others. They did not mind if they were hungry themselves. Sayyiduna ibn Umar radhi is, is quoted to have is quoted in a hadith to have said that a companion was sent the brain of a slaughtered sheep as a gift. He thought to himself that another companion and his children deserve it more than he did because he was knowing his position that he is too poor and he, he is facing the hardship this time. So he on his part was also poor but he preferred to give this brain of the slaughtered sheep to him. So he sent it to that companion. But the second one, the second companion, he thought that there is another companion which is much more needy, who is more poorer than him. So, so this second man sent the gift to a third one. Then the third one also realized it. He thought with himself that there is another brother of mine who is more, who is, who is more poor than me. So he sent to the fourth, in this way, it is mentioned that the position of the goat was sent to many 
houses until it was received back again from where it was first sent as a gift. The first one who sent it ultimately it it cornered cornered at him. So it, it was sent back to him. That was their preference. And this was the background of the revelation of this verse. It is Surah Al-Hashr, verse number 9. وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا But preferring them above themselves, even though poverty was their lot. Even though they were stricken by the immense destituteness. So this was the, this was the uh, attitude of the Sahaba, رِدْوَانُ اللَّهِ تَعَلَىٰ عَلَىٰ They preferred others over themselves. And uh, this is very, very rare now that we give preference to others even upon our own selves. That is why there's a, there's a hell of difference between the Sahaba and us. Why Allah loved them a lot? Because they upheld the values. They practiced the teachings and they followed the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ with letter and separate. And we, we are following only such things which are suitable to us, suitable to our taste. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon us. And though undoubtedly, and there is no doubt about it, that we do, we are not up to the mark of the standard of the Sahaba, but still, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever amal, this, these little amal we are doing, to accept them and make this, these amal as a source of guidance for us in dunya and the source of emancipation for us in the akhirah. Therefore, a person should not feel at ease and at rest that he is doing a he is doing good on his path. He is performing good deeds. He is performing the prayers. He is offering the sadaqa. And he is doing his best. But at the same time, he is neglecting the responsibilities towards the neighbors. So Islam believes in this social structure in which we take care of all the components of the society. In which all the members of the society are taken care of. No matter who the person is. No matter what his faith is. Islam teaches us we have to be kind enough to all, we have to be compassionate to all. And, and here we learn the lessons of altruism and selflessness. If a person is doing best on his part but is neglecting the responsibilities and duties, duties towards the neighbors, so Islam doesn't appreciate this approach. So the best approach is that we learn the lessons. The best approach is that we take care of those in need, specifically when they are neighbors. And in this world we are here for a couple of decades and all our actions are being recorded and counted. So if we do any good to anyone else, it's all being recorded. It's not, it doesn't go in vain. It doesn't go wasted. So we live in a specific place. Usually the norm is that when we, when we, built our house, we live there and we are surrounded by the neighbors. So we are supposed to live uh, live there for a lifelong time scale. So we need to take care of those who are around us. That's how Islam teaches us to live the life for others, to take care of them and not just abandon them, avoiding them and uh, developing a kind of alienation which is now the, we can say the Prominent feature of modern day life is getting secluded and uh, getting away from others. Just to be concerned for our own self-development and not to feel the good wishes for others. We have to be the well-wishers of the humanity. And it, is, it starts from our own surroundings. Our good nature, our philanthropism, and our devotion to the humanity, it starts from our, our own neighbors. It starts from our, from our own door, those who are our next door neighbors. So Islam teaches us that we have to be, we have to be concerned enough for others. We must have the pain for others. We must feel the, the warmth for others. That's the concept of Islam. Otherwise, uh, uh, we are just the selfish creatures which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like. So in this session, now we, we realize it, the significance of being a good neighbor. And if a person 
neglects his responsibilities, he is accountable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, we should not be in, in such a devastating position on the Day of Judgment that we think we, we shall be hopeful that we, are, we have done good job. But on the other hand, we have, we have usurped the rights of others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وبدأ لهم ما لم يكونوا يحتسبون. On the day of judgment, such things will appear before the people that they would have never thought of. Such things will appear before the people, and many of the self, self our prayer, our pious predecessors, whenever they would recite this verse, that on the day of judgment, such things things will appear before the people which they would have never thought of. They would cry a lot. And they would say, we don't know what type of uh, flaws, what type of negligences are with us, which we never took care of. And that will appear before us on the Day of Judgment. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a tawfiq so that we, we take care of ours, we take care of our family members, we take, uh, we take care of our neighbors, we take care of the humanity by and large. And that is the only thing we are going to take along with us. Everything will will be left behind. As we know this, this, this is not something rocket science which is which is ununderstandable. It's quite understandable. We we see by our own naked eyes. We see, observe that those who pass away this dun- from this dunya, what they take along with them, nothing except the good deeds they have performed here. So we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to grant us a tawfiq to have the true understanding of the good deeds and uh, exhaustive concept of good deeds which incorporates not only our own well-wish or well-being it also incorporates the well-being of others we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us the good neighbors the truthful neighbors the concerning neighbors so that uh, our neighborhood will be a source of salvation for us on the day of judgment آمين يا رب العالمين سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك الله وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته